you know, for equal opportunity for, for, for boys and girls is very important. And I've always said this, you know, I have three sons and one daughter. I want my daughter to have the same opportunities that my sons have. What drew you to this in the first place? Um, I've always cared about children's futures. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've always been passionate about. You know, my work with UNICEF began um, when I was 17 years old. I was on tour with Manchester United in Thailand and I went to a, a women's centre and that's where my first involvement began. He's a legend on and off the field, one of the greatest footballers of our times. He's driving change around the world and he's doing it all in style. As the fans at Old Trafford once famously chanted, there is only one David Beckham and he's sitting right in front of me <laughs> on his maiden visit to India. David, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. David, you've come down for a very special cause. You've been a Goodwill Ambassador for UNICEF since 2005 and you have worked with children in particular about breaking barriers down for them. Tell us about the work that has brought you here to India. You know, obviously, firstly, thank you for having me uh, in this beautiful country. I have wanted to come to India for a long, long time. Uh, and for some reason, I've just never been able to make it happen. But uh, this is my first time uh, and it's been an incredible experience so far. You know, everybody has welcomed me with open arms. And obviously, there's a lot of fans here that follow uh, you know, have followed my career over the years and uh, yes, it's You're real, looking at one of them right now. <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here and obviously to be here at an important time as well, you know, obviously to be here over Diwali yeah. uh, and obviously the new year and also the Cricket World Cup. So uh, it's a good time to come, but also it's been a trip that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, you know, I, my, my role as Goodwill Ambassador for UNICEF the one thing that I've always enjoyed is being in the field and being there with the kids and seeing their situations and seeing the progression that's happened, um, but being part of their lives for that time. And for me, it's an important trip for that. And I've seen and met so many great young children, you know, and, and a lot of young girls that are striving for change. Mm -hmm. And that tells me that something great and good and progression is happening here in India, but there's still a lot to be done and there's a lot of good people around that are partnering with UNICEF and championing for, for change as well. So this trip is an important one for me. It's the first time I've been back in the field since COVID. Oh, um, so, so three years. Yeah. So, so this is an important one and also one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. So you spent a couple of days in Gujarat and you met with children and members of different communities there. Yeah. And these are people who are working towards gender equality. Yes. So tell us about what you discovered during your interactions with you them. You know, I, the, the, the first part of my trip was to meet some young children at, uh, at this uh, incredible um, uh, small school. Uh, and their confidence was incredible. You know, they stood up. Some of the kids were six years old, eight years old, 10 years old, and they stood up with this confidence and they talked to me about you know, what their rights should be and what their rights are and what changes they want to make. And this was, some of them were boys, majority of them were girls, and they're championing for, for change, you know, for, for equal rights. And, and I've always said, you know, that is such an important part of this. Yeah. Um, and then I went to the Gujarat uh, University where I, I met young entrepreneurs uh, and innovators that were it was mind-blowing what they were coming up with. You know, there was a couple of young kids there that were 14 years old, 15 years old. There was a 17-year-old girl and a 19-year-old girl. And all of these innovations that they came up with were incredible. You know, the young boy came up with a device that reminds his grandparents to take their medication. You know, things like that. And then there was obviously different, different innovations as well. And for me, to see that, you know, told me that, you know, these young kids just want to be asked, you know, how can they make change? You know, they want to be involved in these decisions. Um, and I came away from that university and I thought, okay, there are a lot of these young kids, mostly young girls, that are going to be leaders and innovators in the future of this country. And that's where the foundation comes from. 
because I said to them, you know, you're making all of these great inventions, you're making all of these things that can change the future, yeah. not just for yourselves and your, maybe your parents, but for the younger generation as well. And then obviously I went yesterday to a couple of different villages um, where I met some families that were so inspiring. Um, I met two, two different families, the grandparents that had obviously taken over the care of the, these young children who had either been orphaned or, you know, obviously they had a difficult situation. So these grandparents had taken these children in. And when I talked to these, these, these kids, you know, one, one family, there was two boys and two girls. And then in the other family, there was four girls. And I obviously said to the father in that family, you know, I have just one girl. I would love <laughs> lots of girls in my, in my family, but I have one girl. How do you, you know, how, are you, how is the situation? And he said, it's incredible. And, and what I loved about what he said to me, which is why I feel that there has been progression, but like I said, you know, there's still a lot to be done. When I said to him, what is the future for these girls? What is the future for your, your daughters here? And his mindset was obviously different to what I expected him to say. You know, he was about, he was late 50s, um, and he turned around and he said, okay, I want them to finish their education and then they can decide if they get married. Yeah. They can decide their future. And that's important, you know, for equal opportunity for, for, for boys and girls is very important. And I've always said this, you know, I have three sons and one daughter. Yeah. I want my daughter to have the same opportunities that my sons have. And that's an important part of this. It's an important part of mindset and changes pe change, changing people's mindsets as well. All right, that's wonderful to hear. Um, breaking barriers, breaking barriers for children when it comes to gender inequality, violence, bullying. You've been associated with this for a very long time. Yeah. What drew you to this in the first place? Um, I've always cared about children's futures. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've always been passionate about. You know, my work with UNICEF began um, when I was 17 years old. I was on tour with Manchester United in Thailand and I went to a, a women's centre. Mm -hmm. And that's where my first involvement began. Then I became global ambassador in 2015. And then we focused, and we all, will always focus on children in general, boys, girls. Um, but our focus changed because whenever I went on a field trip, I would see that young girls were getting left behind. I, I would see that they were treated differently. I could see that they wasn't getting the same opportunities as boys, you know, and I've seen that you know, in the last couple of days, you know, we all know the issue with girls getting forced, young girls getting forced into, into marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, and those moments in a, in a child's life, you know, where they're getting taken out of their education system, you know, that is bad for their future. It's yeah. bad for their brothers and sisters' future to see that and to know that is happening. So those are the important moments where we need to change the mindset of people. And you just need to ask the, the, the kids what they want. You know, I spoke to a couple of the young girls yesterday and I said, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they was like, I want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So that tells me something good is happening in these, in these, um, these care centers. It's, it shows me that something is happening in these communities. You know, these young girls are standing up. You know, I spoke to a young girl again yesterday that was nine years old that when I said to her about her situation at her home mm -hmm. and with her family, you know, the, the, the discussion of going into an early marriage was a discussion that had already happened. She then was able to stand up to her father and say, no, this is what I want, daddy. This is what I want for my future. I want to complete my education. And, and that's a brave decision to, for a nine-year-old girl to stand up against her father. And luckily, her father listened. Not every father does listen. So, you know, there's one girl in a community that is making a change that then affects other people in the community because then, with her father's generous mindset of believing in his daughter, he then can go to other fathers and say, okay, 
this is what's going to happen. This is what is your daughter's future is going to be. So those kind of things are so important. And we all know, you know, the, the population of children in India is the biggest. You know, 460 million children here. You know, one in every five children in the world is in India. And we know when India progresses, the whole world progresses, progresses with them. Um, so that is why it's so important. You mentioned the Cricket World Cup. You've come <laughs> at an interesting time. I know. Um, you know what a big deal cricket is in a country like India. Football has also been picking up. We have our own football league. Yeah. How do you think sports like cricket or football can drive change in children? I've always said that sport is one of the most powerful tools of change. Um, and I've seen that over the years, whether it be in Thailand, whether it be in different parts of Europe, in, in South America, I've seen how sport can change and specifically football because that's where you know my, my my upbringing is from you know i've seen that the moment that i go into one of these villages in 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 towns that don't have tvs that don't have radios but you take a football <laughs> into this village and these kids faces they light up and it's the same with cricket here you know it's such a powerful tool you know there's so many cricketers men, women, where these young kids are looking up to and wanting to be them and wanting to follow everything that they do. That's why it's such an important role for sportsmen, sportswomen to have that opportunity to, to have a platform where they can speak out, where they can, you know, be part of change. And I've seen, you know, when I, when I play football with these kids, whether it be 20 minutes, 40 minutes, two hours, whatever situation they're in around the world, they forget about it. Mm. You know, unfortunately, they have to go back to that situation. But for that time, you know, it tells you how powerful, you know, the, the sport is. You know, it, it breaks down barriers. It gives, keep, it gives children confidence. It gives them a foundation for what they can take into their lives. Whether they became, become cricketers, whether they become footballers, whether they become basketball players, that, that doesn't matter what they get from playing those sports is you know teamwork leadership um, confidence you know and they can inspire aspire to be you know the next generation of cricketers or footballers so sport is so important you know and, and cricket fans are in for a double treat uh, because you're going to be watching <laughs> uh, the semi-final the india versus new zealand match that's how you're spending your day in mumbai is this the first time that you're watching a cricket world cup match it's the first time i've seen a cricket world cup match live um obviously i've, I've followed cricket over the years you know obviously being in in manchester um and having a roommate like gary neville <laughs> gary neville was a huge cricketer and actually him and his brother could have gone on to be professional um, but they chose football instead. So I always used to watch cricket with Gary because he was my roommate. Um, but, you know, obviously being in Mumbai for this game today, for me, I, you can already feel the energy. Um, you can feel the excitement. I think the energy and the excitement is going to be totally different to be in, you know, a, cr a cricket match in a different place. Yeah. I, I'm very excited about that. So, yeah, I grew up around, you know, cricketers like Viv Richards and, you know, Ian Botham and all of these these great uh, players like Brian Lara uh, and obviously Sashin. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about today. All right, I'm getting to the last round of rapid fire questions. Okay. I'm just going to fire <laughs> some questions that you just think of the first thing that comes to your head okay. in that case. Uh, one footballer who's caught your eye recently. Recently, um, Jude Bellingham. India, New Zealand, South Africa or Australia, who are you rooting for in this Cricket World Cup? Well, obviously, I'm going to have to say India. <laughs> That's a safe answer that you're going <laughs> with right now. Beekeeper or an artist, what is an alternate profession for you? Beekeeper. Beekeeper? Beekeeper. What is the next tattoo that you're going to be getting? I don't know. Um... We'll have to wait and see. I used to get my inspiration from my travels, so maybe I'll get one from this from this trip. Oh, well. And you've had many hairstyles over the years, but what's the one hairstyle that you regret? None. None, absolutely. There's somewhere I look back and I think, what was I thinking? Uh, but majority of them I'm okay with because it was okay at the time. No, that was a trick question that I asked <laughs> anyway. And the last one, out of Brooklyn, Romeo, Cruz or Harper 7, 
Which of your kids can really bend it like Beckham? <laughs> Actually, they're all pretty good at, at playing football and playing sports, but um, Romeo is the only one at the moment that is that is part of a team. My son, Brooklyn, is obviously, he likes photography or, or cooking. Uh, my daughter is obviously the boss. Um, and my other son, Cruz, uh, he loves music. So we'll see. It's been a pleasure, David Beckham. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you more often in India. Uh, me too. I can't <laughs> wait to come back. Thank you. Thank you.